Hey Internet, welcome back to Tips and Tricks. I'm Ash from Escape Studios. Now last week was part one of how to make an IBL. I showed you how to create a HDR with a camera and a chrome ball and Photoshop. You can click the link that's on the screen now to watch that if you haven't already. Today's part two where I'm going to show you how to turn that HDR into something you can use in your 3D programs. Okay, so last week we made a HDR with our seven images. That HDR is now open here in Photoshop. We're going to take the reflection of the chrome ball and we're going to flatten it out into an image that can be used on the inside of an IBL node. So the first thing I want to do is crop my HDR to the edges of the chrome ball. So just adjust this little box to the left, right, top and bottom of the chrome ball and hit enter. So now my image has been resized to match my chrome ball. I'm going to save that. What should I call it? I'll call it HDR image to flatten. Uh, make sure you save it as a radiance file. That's a .hdr file because we want to keep all the information. And now I need a program to flatten it. Now I'm going to use HDR Shop. Now HDR Shop has evolved over the years and the most current version of it, HDR Shop version 3, is a paid for product. However, they did used to give earlier versions of this product away for free. It's a little bit hard to get hold of now, but I'll put a link in the description of this video where you'll be able to get hold of a copy. You simply download it onto your desktop and then open it up whenever you need it, and it will look something a bit like this. Please be aware, this only has a non-commercial license on it, so don't go using it on any of your big budget movies, all right? So here's HDR Shop. I'm going to go to File, Open. I'm going to find that file that I just saved, and I'm going to open it up. Images, HDR image to flatten. So here it is, exactly the same as it was in Photoshop. So now go to Image, Panorama, Panoramic Transformation. Now the stuff on the left is what already exists. So HDR Image to Flatten, Format, Mirrored Ball. It is a mirrored ball, you can see that. On the right, the destination image, this is what we're going to create. So we want to make a new image, but change the format to Latitude Longitude, okay? Now I'm sure the existing width will be fine, but for my own peace of mind, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to go to 1920 and click Enter. And here's our image. What it's done is it's taken the reflection of the chrome ball, it's isolated it, and it's flattened it out into a big picture image, which we can then put on the inside of our IBL. So this was the room that the chrome ball was in. There's me taking the photo in the middle. I'm going to go to File, Save As. Make sure you click the top option, .hdr a radiance format, because then we're still keeping all that information that we saved out of Photoshop. So I'll call this HDR Flattened. I'm sure you can come up with better naming conventions than me. Uh, I'm going to nip into Maya now. I haven't created a scene for you because I'm only showing you how to do the IBL today. Uh, so I'm going to go straight into my render settings. I'm going to go from Maya Software to Mental Ray. Head over to the Indirect Lighting tab, where I'll click the Image Based Lighting button, which is right at the top, and it's going to create an IBL node for me. There's my IBL, that yellow ball. Now you all know what IBLs are for. They're for helping out with your lighting and also creating accurate reflections and refractions. Uh, so let's go up to our File node. So in the IBL node, I'm going to click on the little File button and find the HDR flattened image that I just saved. I'll hit 6 on the keyboard. And there you have it. HDR has been effectively mapped to the inside of the sphere. So you'd have your backplate here where the scene is. You'd have your scene all around it. So now everything that's facing your backplate would get an accurate reflection, up to and including me holding the camera. Obviously, your IBL needs to be bigger than everything else in your scene so you get the right reflections. Bear in mind, the primary visibility is on, so it's going to show up in all of your renders at the moment. You don't really want an IBL to show up in your renders. You just want its reflections, its refractions, and its lighting. You can do that with the render stats tick boxes over here. Make sure you use your layer overrides when creating your render layers. So now I have an accurate IBL of the room where I took the chrome ball picture from. So we hope that's helped out some of you budding young filmmakers. Now, if any of you like compositing or Doctor Who, you might want to check out our awesome two-week online compositing taster course. You can click on the link on the screen now, and it will take you to a site where you can check it out in more detail. It's a great way to dip your toe into the compositing pool to see if it's the kind of thing you want to follow in your VFX career. Uh, it's great to learn a couple of little techniques. You get plenty of feedback. It's really interesting, so click on the link and go and check it out. Also this week, we've got tickets for the VFX Festival going online. VFX Festival is run by Escape Studios. We've got workshops, panels, screenings, industry talks, all happening both here at Escape Studios and at The View in Leicester Square. There's loads of stuff going on. It's all run by us. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Click on the link that you can see on the screen now. It will take you to the website, watch the awesome trailer, buy some tickets, and come and see me in real life and meet the rest of the Escape Studios staff. It will be the first two weeks of November, and we really hope to see you there. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hit subscribe now so you don't miss out on any more of our videos. We'll see you next week for more tips and tricks.